So what is full stack? Uh, full stack is basically uh, yeah, like a full stack is a method developer that starts from scratch and takes it to production. You need to know the front end and the client side. You need to know the back end and you put the server. And then you also need to uh, have, have an idea about the database. So as we talking about the database in a very qualitative manner, uh, because it is a vast, vast realm, uh, you, you will have to build to and dig deep into it. Yeah, but I'll be giving a basic understanding about that. Uh, next day, I'll be talking about a server. Uh, since you guys are uh, a, a React and React native engineers, so uh, you guys will be doing this. So uh, I, I I will be discussing about setting up a server in Node.js. Uh, so that so so, so there's no like a new new language to learn. Then uh, finally, I'll be talking about DevOps. That is how to deploy the server, get it up and running, and face the problems. Uh, in my proposal, I had talked about this. Uh, Discussing about Docker and Kubernetes for the time constraints, I might talk about it in time. So, why full stack? The, the main reason, the most important reason why you should go full stack is uh, it makes you independent, right? It, you do not have to rely on any any backend engineer or any DevOps engineer to get you running, to get your app running. You, uh, when you are a full stack uh, mobile developer, you, you write your app, you write your server, you manage the database, and then you deploy your server. You deploy your APKs, everything. So you you are an uh, independent person. You can do whatever you want. You can also go freelance later if you want. And another uh, another reason is like why not? Since you already know JavaScript because you're writing front ends, then there's, there's literally no point to not try going full stack, right? Uh, the only reason you should not be doing full stack is if you do not like it. But if you have tried it and you just don't enjoy uh, writing back and forth. So that's the only reason why you should not be doing it. Apart from that, like, it is very easy. There is nothing intimidating about DevOps. It used to, uh, it used to be intimidating back in the day when there were no containers and stuff. But uh, since the introduction of Docker and Kubernetes, it has become really, really easy. So um, let's get into it. So what is a database? As the name uh, suggests, it is anything that's full data. Uh, it could 
be a high end engineering needs or it could be a uh, giant or a Oracle SQL database or something like that. So, a uh, database is widely categorized into two uh, parts that is uh, the relational database and a non relational database. Uh, relational database is uh, in a relational database, uh, data is stored in the form of tables and there are abstract relationships over those tables that can be relationships over those tables. And anything that is not a relational database is a non relational database. So, uh, you can have a uh, database kind of a uh, database of uh, having key, key value pairs, uh, or you can have uh, big JSON trees, or you can have graphs, and whatnot. Um, yeah, so the, uh, they are the two categories. So, SQL is the language that we use to, uh, to, to query the relational database. So, the relational database are also called SQL databases, and non relational is that uh, low SQL databases. So, I will just explain uh, what SQL is. What what is the basic difference between SQL and NoSQL database? Uh, very qualitatively, taking an example of the uh, basic log application that that people generally like uh, right when they get started, right? So uh, you can uh, in, in a relational database you have an article table which is related to categories table, which is related to tags table, which is related to uh, comments, which is related to the user table. So it, it is just a table which will have entries and Say, say uh, there is an article called React. The author is Rishi. The name is Fusak React Native. Now, there will be another table called uh, Authors, which, which will have an entry called Rishi, and this table will refer to that entry. So, that's how uh, SQL databases work, that is relation databases. Uh, in case of NoSQL, there are a lot of examples. I will go through some examples later in the talk as well. But uh, the, uh, the, the uh, if, if you look at the similar schema, how you will handle the same log schema is you will have an uh, 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 article document which will have names of all the articles, and for each article there will be a name, there will be a date, there will be a user. Then inside the user, every user will have a name and email. So the data keeps repeating in uh, in, in in the uh, no SQL document type of database. Uh, so, like, there is, a, there is a big debate which which uh, you should use. So, the, to, to start with, uh, like, these are the common uh, databases to start with. NongoDB has taken up a big time, and MySQL, uh, Postgres, uh, these databases are good uh, good uh, systems to start with because uh, most. <coughs> Uh, most frameworks, most frameworks that you will use for uh, building your application and building your servers will have a client for these databases, right? So these are databases, classes of databases. You have to go and look into it. Because it's a vast subject, cannot be covered in a fault. So next is the server. Uh, a server is anything that takes takes some request and uh, returns a response. That's all. It is nothing abstract. It is it, it is as simple. It just takes a request. Processes it and returns a response. That's all. So we'll set up a Hello World server, uh, uh, and then we look at how to fetch data from the internet. Uh, also, we look at the basic architecture of uh, business applications, uh, web sockets, and finally we'll see how to manage sessions. Uh, that is, you know, uh, when now, for example, if you're using Google or Ola app, and you have to, uh, you, you are not logging in every time you open the app, right? The session is stored. Once you log in, the session is stored in the in the local device. So we will we'll see how to do that in the app. Right? So, uh, yeah, this is the node JS Hello World app, that's it. So, yeah, one more thing I would suggest uh, to not go into the separate of the code, just try to understand this uh, from, from the conceptual point of view. So, this is a basic uh, node JS Hello World. Uh, it just uh, uh, includes the express module, and uh, that's how you write a local app. So, if you hit the slack, uh, uh, one more thing. This app runs on port 3000. So once you just run more, uh, once you just save this code in uh, file called server.js and uh, run more server.js, you can get this application running on 3000 uh, port 3000. And uh, to hit it, just hit the uh, localhost port in 3000 on the browser and you will get a hello world in the browser. Right? So the next thing we see is fetch how to fetch data from the server. Uh, almost every app needs. Get, get, get data from the internet, right? So, uh, how you do that is uh, in the server code. <coughs> so, so 
in server code, uh, I have I have written a simple route that is a post route that is app dot post, and it takes it takes with the request at slash tech, and uh, it has a uh, it also takes a function uh, which takes the request and response as parameters, and uh, you take the response, read it, and you return return the double of the number. So in this case, you will take a number as the request, it's double the number as the and from the client that is reacted, you can use this. So what? Use the right request option that the method is post. Since it's a post code, uh, add some header that is application JSON. Uh, since you are sending JSON data, and you write the body that is the number uh, that is uh, 44 in this case. So once you send it, uh, you, you make a request using fetch. Uh, so you await fetch, and the response is you can handle whatever you want. So that's how you fetch data from the internet. So this is not fetching further, as in uh, a more complicated fetch query. In, in, uh, this is the server code where, uh, where I added a post code. And uh, what this does is this uh, contacts the Jiffy API. You guys know about Jiffy API. Yeah. So it, it, it contacts the Jiffy API. Uh, and so what it does is uh, it contacts the Jiffy, uh, Jiffy API with the word. And whatever is, uh, whatever is that Jiffy, Jiffy gives, this returns back the URL to the embedded uh, URL to the Jiffy. So this is the server side code. How, how this is useful is that uh, uh, this, this contains an API key, right? Uh, and the request parameter. Yeah, this contains an API key. You do not want to include secret keys in the uh, application code, right? You always want to have all the keys in the server. Because, say this API key expires, you, you have to make another update, right? So it is all file uh, API. Have it in the server, all you have to do is just update the server with the key, and uh, whatever happens to the live in production will, will be live in production. So, uh, how this works is you just uh, get, get a request from the client, it takes a word, the, the query parameter, and uh, it, it makes the query to the GP API and gets back the URL and sends the URL back to the client. So, how I do it, uh, to, uh, did, uh, did it in React Native is so. So I, I just explain. Uh, how it, so initially, uh, 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 an initial state is rendered, which has a null image and a text box and a button. So when the when the user types something uh, and the button is pressed, the state is updated uh, with that query. And uh, like you guys are familiar with React Native, how things the flow works in React Native. So the, the state changes, and as soon as the state changes, this this uh, function called component did not respond. Yeah. So uh, uh, yeah. So every time a component on this method, a uh, component did not respond. So uh, in in this function, I I make the uh, request to the server and send the the, the the query that was set in the state to the server and get the response. On the response I uh, I have gotten and and again render the uh, uh, render the component by setting the uh, GIF URL in the state and the GIF will be the, the GIF will be shown in the React Native application. Uh, pretty trivial stuff but uh, shows this is just a simple thing which can be complicated because it is uh, it, it is basically an example of sending an information processing we can do. This example also shows uh, shows how databases are used. So what essentially happened is uh, we, we we made a query to the you know, the, uh, the, the Giphy API. Now if it has uh, some gifs and uh, associated tags stored in the database, right? Uh, so what if it does it fetches the the the, the, the URL. <laughs> Such as uh, uh, frameworks 
such as Kubernetes uh, allow even more uh, abstract version of this that is secrets. You can uh, you can add these secret keys to your project secrets, which are base sixty four encoded, and then you can access them from your code uh, when it is deployed. So next part is the push notifications. Uh, broadly, how push notifications work are there is a notification server. Uh, mainly, uh, it is linked with the OS. Uh, so for Android, the server set up by GCM. Uh, but now FCM wraps over it, but uh, it is basically set by GCM, and it has uh, some coding business going on with the. It has some coding business going on with the Android uh, ecosystem. So it has some coding business going on with the Android ecosystem, and so how it works is if you want to include push notifications in your code, you have to register your app with Firebase. Once that that is done. Every time the app is installed, a token will be generated associated with Firebase and it will be sent to the Firebase, Firebase server. Now, this token, when, whenever it is generated, you also have to store it in some, some, some database. And uh, now, now, if you want to send uh, a push notification to, 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 to this device, you have to uh, look up in the database what the token of the device is, send a post request to the notification server, and it will push a notification to the device. That's simple as that. So, uh, Firebase is the preferred method because it is it, it is widely used right now and pro provides support for all all operating systems like iOS uh, and Android. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's it about push notifications. Uh, the final thing is uh, web sockets. Uh, so web socket is a bidirectional uh, open duplex connection where uh, persistent works. Uh, I didn't say persistent because it's not in person. You will lose connection when you have set set up. You have to connect again and again. That is a different thing, but it is a it is a constant connection where data can flow in both directions. So whenever you want a an active connection between the server and the client, you will want to use web sockets, right? So uh, uh, a very important use case about this is chats. Like you, uh, there, there is no better way to to, to use web sockets than chat, and there is no better way to implement chat, chat other than to use web sockets, right? So this is how it's implemented. You just have to um, include this uh, very common library that is WS, a JavaScript library, and uh, and open a connection. And whenever some message is received, you, you will get a call back. You just have to handle it however you want. Uh, and uh, one thing is session management. So in this, uh, I talked about this earlier. You have to sometimes store some, uh, store some information to the local device. Right? Uh, for example, if I log into a server. And I get get some authorization token. I want to store it somewhere for using it again and again because I do not want my user to log in again and again. So how I do this is say uh, this is the login end, right? And uh, I, I make a login query and I get the auth token to the So in React Native, there's this thing called yeah, async storage. All you have to do is async storage dot set item, set some key, and uh, and and the auth token, and uh, that's it. Next time, uh, whenever the component, uh, <coughs> whenever the component is open, you just have to async storage dot get item and fetch that token, and then you can check if it's valid or not. If it's valid, you can uh, send the user to the home screen, or you you have to make them uh, log in again. So that's it with the session management. The next thing is uh, deployment. So I had a video here, but I uh, since I haven't done it now, I'd rather show it. Right. Yeah, so uh, now since we have set up a server, we have to test it with, with our application, right? Uh, our application uh, has to hit some public URL. It cannot hit it local host because it won't be available from the server, right? So, how you do that is uh, temporarily there is a solution called uh, ngrok. How many of you have heard about ngrok? Yeah, so there is this thing called an ngrok which you can uh, expose, your, uh, expose your local host to the internet. Can you do that now? So this is the server.js I have. I just want to go. I was copying my stuff to laptop, so I had lost this because this is yeah. Oh, 
So I am running the load server here. Uh, it, the, the server starts at 4000. It says if the server is working. Yeah, so I think that's going to work. Now I have to drop this unit with 3000. So it will expose the 3000 code to the very end of it. How, how it does, it, uh, does this is, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, for now, just it, 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 uh, uh, the error uh, implementation is that it, it tunnels through the firewall. and. Uh, Creates a public URL, generates some wildcard SSL certificates, and so that's how you will uh, deploy your application to begin with. Uh, for production, there are uh, better ways. So these are the next thing you should the next things you should try out. That is, uh, if you learn a database, read up about containers. I will also show something about containers. So I have a Docker file here. So container is anything that uh, that so have you ever faced this problem that uh, you have some code written and uh, you push it to a git repo and your friend pulls it and he says that no it doesn't work for me and you are like but it works for me. So a container solved this problem that now instead of pushing it to a git repo I will, I will push it to a docker registry and the docker image will work. So container, a container image is a complete piece of software which, which contains, a, uh, contains a proper environment and all the dependencies. And uh, uh, including the source code, uh, and everything just works out of the box. So the, uh, if the Docker image works with me, it will work with you. But the containers were basically uh, built to uh, to to move software around in different computing environments. So uh, how you, uh, this is a Docker file. Yeah, this is a Docker a Docker file for this. Uh, what what this does is this just creates a, a Docker image that is uh, consider it it like a. a Mini VM running inside the uh, inside inside something called as the container. Uh, so it, it, it pulls from a, a base container which has node and node. That is just a, a small open operating system which has node and node. Then it creates a directory. So work there is a cut of the command that creates a directory and cities into it. Once you do that, then you copy your package.json and run npm install. Copy uh, then then you copy the source code uh, and expose port 3000 because our server is going to be running on 3000. And then just uh, cmd node server and that's how it will work. Uh, well, when you hit, so I'll, I'll try to build this Docker file over here. Uh, yeah, so it is building the Docker uh, uh, Docker file. It it finished all the steps and uh, the Docker file is ready. I can see. It. These are all, 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 all the Docker files that are, uh, uh, these are all the uh, all the Docker images that are there on my PC. So this is the one that we created. Now what uh, the, the next step I do is Docker run. Okay, cool. So this uh, light demo didn't work. Uh, so what you have to do is uh, um, uh, this this image once pushed, it will, it will it can be pulled by anybody from a Docker registry, and uh, uh, it will work. If it works now, now now it's not running for for me, so it won't run for, uh, run for anybody. But if it runs for me, it will it will run for anybody. That's that's basically the thing about Docker containers. And uh, the next steps you have to read up read, read up about Kubernetes, which is a tool to deploy Docker images. Sorry, the demo didn't work. But yeah, uh, any questions? Yeah.